In this movie, you'll learn how to customize the invalid answer prompt that displays when learners try to submit a question without making any choices. So even if you set up a custom quiz with custom correct and incorrect feedback, there's still a, a default prompt that'll display if the learner clicks submit without first making a choice. And this is what it looks like. So here's the quiz. If I don't make any choices here and I try to submit just to get through the quiz, there's my invalid answer prompt. Now it doesn't look anything like the custom quiz that I designed, but that's okay because I can make my own. And here's how that works. Now I'm starting with a basic quiz here. Everything was created within a quiz slide and storyline. If you see over here in the slide layers, I have my correct and incorrect. They haven't been customized yet, but we could obviously do that. But what I want to do is create an additional slide layer to hold my invalid prompt message. So I'm going to click new layer and I'll just name this anything. Invalid is fine. And here I can add my basic design for the message. Now you can do whatever you want here. You can customize it. You can make a, a custom slide layer for this. In this case, I'm just going to put something really quick together to hold my message. And that's going to work for now. I do want to put a hide layer trigger on this OK so that it closes the layer. So I'll just go ahead and add that right now. Hide layer when user clicks rectangle three. So this is the message we want to display if the learner tries to cre uh, click the submit button before making a choice. And the way we do that is by overriding the default submit interaction trigger on the submit button. So what we need to do is two different things. We need to add a trigger that tells this only to submit the multiple choice quiz if one of these four choices is selected. And if I look at these in the timeline and expand this, right? We have a radio button one, two, three, and four. And each one of those is going to have different states. We want to evaluate whether or not any of these states have been changed. If they're selected, right, which is, means that a, a choice has been made, then we know we can go ahead and submit the interaction. If nothing's been selected, then we know that nothing's been selected or cho chosen, and we need to show that invalid prompt. So we can work first from the submit interaction trigger by accepting the default uh, trigger, but we need to add a couple conditions. The conditions are only submit this if We'll create a new condition. Our first shape, which is radio button one, if that equals selected, right? If radio button one is selected, go ahead and submit it. We'll add another condition. This time it's an or, right? If one is selected or if radio button two is selected, see how this is going to work? And then we'll add another condition or, right? We only can have one selected. We don't want to use and because that would evaluate whether or not they're all selected. And so this one needs to be selected. And then finally, one for the last one is selected. So only one of these is going to be, if, if only one of these is selected, that's what the or is telling us, go ahead and submit the interaction. Now, we need another trigger that says show layer, the invalid layer, if all of these are normal, which means we'll use the and this time. So I'm going to add one more trigger. And my action is to do what? It's to show a layer. The layer is invalid when user clicks the submit button. And I'm using the built-in submit button, the player submit button here. On the previous example, I had my own. It does not matter. We just, when they click a button, that's what we want to evaluate. So my four conditions here will be on the condition that radio button one is equal to normal right? And radio button two, because this time we're using and because we need all four of these to be normal. And that's how we're going to evaluate that nothing has been selected. So that's the big difference between the first trigger where we evaluated just whether one was normal or selected. And this one we're going to evaluate uh, looking for all four of these as normal. Click OK. Now the one thing here, let me pull this down, is trigger order matters. It always matters, but it matters in this case because if we have this submit interaction first, it's going to use the default built-in prompt to alert us that nothing's been selected. So we want to override that, but we want to move this up to show the layer first. So I'm going to move that just above the submit interaction. So let's go ahead and test this out. First thing I want to do is just 
try to submit the interaction without making a choice. There's my invalid answer. I click OK. Now when I make a choice, this is incorrect. There's my incorrect feedback. And that's how easy it is to create your own custom feedback prompt for the learner when learners don't make a choice. Now what's nice is you can copy the slide layer. You can build a template around this so you don't have to enter this every time. But it's a great way to override the defaults using your own custom designs in Articulate Storyline.